Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Dr. Foster, for inviting me yet again. Um, and I have a disclosure to make, um, not a financial one, but I have to admit that this topic is quite frustrating. Uh, it's one of those topics that we don't know nearly enough, and there is not enough research um, available either. So I'm going to try to walk you through what evidence there is and what it means. By now, we already know uh, the numbers about the pediatric uveitis and how it constitutes um, actually only 10% of uveitis cases, but how the impacts on these kids' lives are so significant. And um, as we know, post-articular JIA uh, constitutes overwhelming majority of patients with JIA-associated uveitis. And coming to the subject of arthritis versus uveitis, um, at the onset already, the course um, or the discordance is pretty clear. As you know, only one-third of patients are diagnosed simultaneously with active joint and eye disease, whereas the rest will um, come in with either only joint disease initially or only the eye disease initially. So there's clearly no direct correlation between joint and eye disease. Um, and the severity of uveitis is typically unrelated to the severity of underlying joint disease in these children. Um, and while joint disease often diminishes with age, age, ocular disease frequently persists into adulthood. Not only um, are the joint and eyes are discordant, but also the burden of uh, disease seems to be, show some discrepancy in terms of visual versus arthritic consequences in these children. Um, while we know that, um, sorry, I don't know how that happened. While we know that the post-articular onset typically affects the eyes most, and you would expect um, more um, impact on um, function from that perspective, it looks like, from some measures that actually inability to function normally in a school setting actually occurs more in polyarticular or systemic onset. This is probably because of the way it is assessed and physical function dependent questionnaires. Um, Rosenberg and his colleagues looked at uh, 35 patients with JAA and uveitis with a long follow-up. And uh, for among those, only 20 had uh, available data. And they basically plotted out, and I highlighted them here, um, those with discordant course between the joint and eye disease. And in 70% of these patients, patterns of eye and joint activity uh, differ significantly. So again, it brings us to the 30% versus 70%, and overwhelming majority of these patients do show discordant um, disease course. And similarly, Grassi and his co colleagues um, followed up um, JIA-associated uveitis uh, for a mean of seven years, and in only one-third of patients were they able to show active arthritis and uveitis concurrently. So again, uh, about 60 to 70 percent of patients had a discordant course. In the same paper, um, they have also pointed out what we know now, that the majority of uh, uveitis occurs within the first three, four years. And this is, I think, a very nice visual um, illustration of that. And they also looked at um, onset of disease separately from the course of the disease. And at onsets, approximately 74% of uveitis developed during an acute phase of articular disease. So when there was um, active joint disease, there was also active eye disease. Um, whereas during the course of disease, the concordance was much lower. And you can see that only 35% of uveitis relapses were actually contemporaneous with the joint disease. So why is it that at onset they seem to be somewhat more concordant and during the course of the disease more discordant? And I went to try to find out some, some research um, whether animal models could explain this discordance. And Rosenbaum's group in OHSU looked at an IL-1 um, receptor antibody knockout model, and they showed that absence of IL-1 RA um, in these animals predisposed to spontaneous arthritis, but not uveitis. Although in some animal models um, of arthritis, uveitis also develops. So it looks like discordance also exists in some animal models, although not all. This discordance is also evidenced by differential responses to treatment. And by now, we, I think, are all aware 
of uh, these differential response to especially Enbrel or a uh, which is which has been effective for controlling joint disease, but not so much for the eye disease. Uh, infliximab, on the other hand, uh, is effective for controlling both pretty well. Um, there is some evidence about cyclosporin as well, and Printo's study um, showed that cyclosporin was actually not at all effective in controlling joint disease. And there was another study, although not in the same quality, um, that showed cyclosporin was moderately effective in eye disease, although the difference in terms of differential activity was not nearly as striking as we have seen in Enbrel. Uh, we have also had some experience um, showing the uh, tenor sep differential effect at NEI uh, with a double mass random randomized small clinical trial. And in this uh, study also, although NREL was clearly effective in the treatment of arthritis, it was not uh, more effective than placebo for the eye disease. And yet again, an, another group from um, Germany also showed um, the uveitis flares before the onset of atenorcept in JIA patients. And you can see that the flares actually increased while they were on atenorcept. And because of these reasons, we don't anymore um, typically use atenorcept in patients with uveitis and arthritis. So I wanted to give you a case example um, of a six-year-old uh, boy with systemic JIA. Uh, with poorly controlled anterior uveitis. And as you know, I, in uveitis, involvement with systemic JIA is quite rare. Um, and he has his past medical um, history, or, or the medic medication history, included pretty much everything we use for uveitis, methotrexate, infliximab, methylprednisolone IV, naproxen, prednisone, etanercept. He enrolled in the trial uh, of high-dose daclizumab with active inflammation in the eye, and he not only resolved um, his uveitis, but remained completely quiet during 36 weeks of the trial, but he developed a severe flare-up requiring hospitalization um, and starting of high-dose IV uh, steroids for the treatment of his systemic disease, highlighting these, um, this disease that seems to affect both organs, uh, yet somehow has a very, very discordant course. And this might be particularly highlighted in systemic JAA, because from what I understand, again, I'm not a rheumatologist, but um, their, their course tends to be different than other um, types of JAA as well. So what is the reason for differential activity in joints and eye? And that is the frustrating question, because I don't, I don't seem to find a good answer for that. Um, so not only do I have no answer for the band keratopathy, Dr. Foster, but I don't have a good answer for this one either. Um, and oligo and polyarticular JA seems to have similar biomarker profiles, whereas systemic JA has a distinct profile. Is there something that could be, um, is there something there that could explain this discordance in eye and joint disease? It's not clear. Um, it could also be that there might be different expressions of cytokines and their receptors in these two organs, and some animal models seem to suggest that as well. Um, and there might be differences in immune privilege, of course, I being an immune privileged organ. So unfortunately, to this date, we still don't have enough data to explain why the, uh, the inflammation in the eye and the joints are so discordant. Although both joints and, uh, and the uvea are affected in this disease, uh, we are not sure what the relationship um, during the course of disease is. Um, interestingly, um, in some animal models, this concordance of inflammation has been shown, while in some other animal models, as I mentioned, there is a clear discordance as well. Um, the finding of differential um, efficacy of TNF inhibitors might also provide some clues to us in terms of the differences in uh, pathophysiologic mechanisms in these organs. However, despite our poor knowledge in this, in this topic, and despite the uh, obvious discordance of um, eye inflammation and joint inflammation, choice of immunosuppressives should be definitely discussed still with both pediatric rheumatologists and the ophthalmologist or uveitis specialist. Because the decision to stop an immunomodulatory th therapy just because the eyes are under control or just because the joints are, are under control might impact the other organ very adversely. Uh, so the discussions have to be ongoing. And hopefully with the expanded understanding of pathogenesis of, of this disease, we might be able to um, come up uh, with better immunomodulatory strategies, but that seems to be um, 
well, there seems to be a little way to go still. Thank you very much.